In today's tutorial, I'm going to make a radio button group. This is going to use the behavior designer. And I started from scratch drawing all the shapes and everything. And I call out all the keyboard shortcuts that I use. So I think this will be helpful if you're a beginner. This is a quick video, but I've got a pretty good one or maybe even more than one coming next week. So look forward to that. <laughs> Let's start by creating a circle that will serve as our radio button. I'm going to press O on my keyboard to activate the oval tool. And then I'm going to hold shift while clicking and dragging. Shift is going to make it a perfect circle. Now I'm going to change the fill color and I'm going to use this light blue color. Okay, now I want another circle. So I'm going to select that one and press command D on my keyboard. That's going to duplicate that circle. And you can see in the layer list now there's two. If I hold option and shift while resizing that circle, that's going to resize it proportionally towards the center. So it's going to be a little bit smaller, but centered perfectly on top of the other one. And you can really see what happened once you change the color. So I'm going to choose a darker blue for this inner circle. Now this represents my radio button. This is a activated radio button. Let's create a quick behavior around this. First, I'll put it in a group using command G and then command R to rename the group and I'll call it radio. Now I'm going to click the behavior button in the toolbar and in the behavior designer, I'm going to create a new state. And in that state, I'm going to take that center circle and resize it down again, holding option and shift, which is going to make it proportionally resized towards the center. And I'm resizing it all the way down to zero by zero. So you can't see it anymore. Now, when I toggle between the states, you see it animate in and out. And so that's going to be the radio button turning on and off. Next, I need a way to get between these states. So I'll go to the initial state, press D on my keyboard, which is the shortcut for draw link. And then I'm going to click and drag to draw a link around the radio button. I'll target the new state and then I'll click on the new state to go to it, press D again and draw a link around the radio button on that state and target the initial state. Now I have a link on each state that targets the other state, which means if I keep clicking on it, it'll toggle back and forth. So if I open the preview, we can test that out. You click once, click again, goes back and forth. Now I'm just going to type in a label here next to my radio button. I'm going to use the T shortcut to activate the text tool then click and type in the word option. I'm going to select both those layers and hold option while dragging them, which is going to duplicate them. And then if you press command D after that option drag, it's going to duplicate it again, but also repeat that movement. So now I have three radio buttons and I can click them here and they work great, right? Except that this isn't how radio buttons work. This is more like how checkboxes work. I want it to be so that if you click one, the others are deactivated because this is a option group. So we're going to have to make some changes. I'm actually going to remove the behaviors from these three radio buttons and start over on the behavior part. What I'll do now is select all of these, including the labels, and I'm going to make a new behavior around this whole thing. Because I need to control the two other radio buttons when one is clicked, I want to have all of them inside of one behavior. And you know what? I just realized I need to hide the circles on two of these so that we start out with only one selected. So I'm going to hit escape, go back to the canvas, and I'm going to make these circles uh, zero by zero for the bottom two options. Now I'll select my group that already has a behavior on it now, and you can click behavior and that will go to edit the behavior that you've already created rather than creating a new one. Okay. Now I'll create a new state. And in this new state, I want the second oval to be full size and the first one to be zero by zero. And I'm going to select the first one to see how big is it? And it looks like it's 19 by 19 which means that I want this next one to be 19 by 19. So I'll size that up and I'll size the first one down. So now the second one is selected, one more new state. And in this state, I'm going to make that third one activated. I'll make it 19 by 19 and the middle one back to zero. And now I have all the states that I need. I just need a way to link between them. So I'll press D, draw a link around the first one and target the initial state. Now I'm already on the initial state. So this actually shows up as a gray link to indicate that tapping this link doesn't do anything, but you'll see why I did that in a minute. Now I'm going to create another link just below it over the second option. And that's going to link to the second state and one more for the third option. And that'll link to the third state. Now, the reason I created all three of these, including the first one, which doesn't do anything is so that I could just select all of these now. So I'll hold shift and click each one and then press command C to copy them and then go to the second state and press command V to paste them. So I've got all three links pasted in there 
and I'll go to the third state and paste them in again. So it's really easy to get all the links onto all the states because they're all the same. Now I'll open the preview and I can test that out again. And you see now only one option is ever activated. And you can tap on the label, which is nice because that's typically how radio buttons work. And so that's how you do it. Pretty easy to set up, but maybe a little bit unintuitive if you don't think at first to create this behavior around all of the radio buttons at once.